Okay, this is a uh, video comparing the IC705 to the Inventoral uh, KX3, which has been around for oh, almost 10 years now. So, anyways, um, this is kind of a shootout where you've got the coax switch here, going to be antenna 1 and antenna 2. Um, let me turn this down a little bit. So, um, I uh, found a nice station, a DX station, this morning. It's not real strong. It's, he's over in Austria. And um, I just want to kind of do a little AB comparison. So here we go. He's not, let's see. He's not talking right now. Just give a sec. Someone else is talking. But it's a really nice radio. Um, it has, um, oh, here we go. Okay, so um, I just wanted to do this video. Um, the, uh, the real purpose is, I guess, just to kind of see the uh, A-B comparison. Um, I know uh, there's been countless videos on this one, the 705 and also the KX3. And I know a lot of times people will buy radios based on specifications. They'll sit and say, well, it's 0.02 better, and this bar graph is better on that, and this and that. But I, I, when I buy a radio, I uh, judge it by what I can hear. And um, you know how how well it works, and and of course ergonomics and features. Um, let's face it, all these radios are pretty darn good. And so you're kind of splitting hairs when it comes down to uh, receivers. They're, as as you can see, they both sound great. But what's actually pretty impressive that this guy, the KX3, which came out over 10 years ago, it is a software defined radio too. Um, it's still holding its own and uh, has a great receiver. Um, I still I still love this thing. Um, I don't think I could part with it. Um, what really uh, I like a lot is this VFO. It's just so sweet. <laughs> you can kind of win my heart over with a nice VFO. Uh, this one has a good VFO, but you know it's it's uh, not quite as interesting, I guess, uh, and smooth. Okay, let's see. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, obviously, this has a lot more features. Uh, this guy has the uh, Spectre display, which the KX3 doesn't. You can get a KX3 with a Spectre display. It's the P3, I think it's called. But that, of course, is another three, four hundred dollars or something. So, uh, you know, it, it, this radio gets expensive when you start adding stuff. It, it, because at the time, that's the only option they had. Um, uh, they didn't have abilities to build scopes into radios like we do now. And um, so and this guy is more expensive even to this day. It's it's not cheap. So, um, let's see. The um, uh, other things I can tell you about these two radios, uh, they both have built-in batteries, but let's face it, both the time, most of the time when you use these things, um, you're not going to um, rely on the internal battery, at least if you're running a little bit more power. Uh, this will run up to 15 watts. I've got the extra heat sink, which allows it to run a little bit um, um, with more power comfortably. And that was an add-on feature. Um, this guy, he only goes up to 10 watts, which is, you know, still considered QRP. Um, now, if you're interested, um, I'll show you something else on my desk here. This is the uh, KX, or, yeah, KXPA 100 amp, which I got... 
uh, used, I found it at Hamvention, and um, it works great with the KX3, but you know what, it actually works very well with the uh, 705. It's a great amp. Um, this is the uh, ALC jack that goes inside the 705, and uh, in order to make it uh, connect up to the KXP, you, uh, or KXPA 100, <laughs> it's hard to say, um, you go into the key out, which is an RCA jack. So uh, the wiring on this is real simple. It's basically uh, tip to tip, uh, tip on this to the tip on the RCA, and then ground, which is the inner connection on the three pin, um, 3.5 millimeter jack to the ground um, on the RCA jack. And that's it. So I was thinking, well, I'll make that cable. Actually, you know what this is? This is actually a stereo uh, RCA cable. And I just used one of the RCA connectors on the other end and it works fine. And, uh, and this amp actually has um, a built-in antenna tuner, which is kind of nice. So um, uh, it'll actually work well. So I don't know if I'll drag this thing out in the field. I'm thinking about doing POTA next year uh, with all this gear and figure out a nice uh, outdoor antenna uh, to use. Or you just you know, go out on a picnic table and have some fun. Um, and the reason why I'm kind of getting back into QRP a little bit more is we got the sunspots coming up, and that's going to be an exciting time uh, with lots of contacts with very little power. So if you're thinking about getting into amateur radio, this is a great time because we're on the upswing um, of the solar cycle, and it's uh, worth uh, investigating the amateur radio and having, having a lot of fun with it. Um, so basically, what I would say is both of these radios have great receivers. Um, this one just lacks a little more features, but it is smaller and it's older. So, uh, but I, I just kind of wanted to, you know, do a side by side, wondering if after ten years uh, this guy has um, lost a little bit of its uh, shine, uh, receiver wise. And I don't think it has, as you heard from both uh, radios uh, displaying that station in Austria. Uh, they uh, came in nice and loud, and on both radios. Uh, what I will say about this one, which is really kind of nice, uh, like I said, there's a lot more features in this guy, is you can actually connect up to things like a Bluetooth headset. So this is my uh, Blue Parrot headset. I have that working. That works fine. Uh, this is my uh, Apple AirPods. That works great. So you can use those, both of those for transmit and receive. Um, in fact, even if you have one of these, um, this is the um, uh, Bose N700. These work great too. A little hotter if it's out of sight in the uh, hot day. But, um, you know, there's a uh, nice connectivity. Uh, this also has Wi-Fi, which you can see. This guy doesn't have Wi-Fi. But then again, once again, it's older, so I can't fault it. Um, but with the Wi-Fi, you can hook up to your network and get some uh, connectivity. Um, and um, I'm thinking about maybe trying to work that into a little portable router for maybe FDA if I want to do that out in the field or something. Uh, now you're wondering, where the heck did you get this base from? Well, this is actually something I made. I saw a base that's supposed to be available in January, sometime, I think like late January, I thought that's not too much to make your own. And uh, that was through DX Engineering, by the way. So I said, well, I'll just make my own. So this is a, a tripod mount I got from an old um, Leica camera that my grandfather had. So I took the bottom off of it. I still have that, didn't throw it away. It's, it's a great tripod. And then just uh, get a piece of uh, bar stock, three inch, and hammer coated, sprayed it with some Rust-Oleum. And it's, it's a nice finish. And then this is the uh, uh, adventure key from uh, Begali, Begali, oh. and it's got a magnetic base. So what perfect connection would it be to be able to put this on the magnetic base? There we go. And you got yourself a nice little uh, key, which ties into this. Now this guy also has a key. In fact, that key <laughs> was on this radio uh, with a little mount. Uh, but I took it off just to make this uh, little thing. And this base, when you buy the Adventure Key, it does come with that magnetic base. You just take this part off the magnetic base and attach it to the KX3. Um, this is also a nice handy little gadget, gadget too. You can kind of find out what you're drawing for uh, power, current, and everything. And this is made by West Mountain Radio. Um, you can pick this up. Um, I don't have it in line, but you can see uh, current, uh, watts, um, and all sorts of... Uh, Power information so you can kind of decide where you're at with regard to your uh, battery consumption. Um, I don't know if I can do this real quick, but uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, I was trying to shoot these. Oh, here, it's down here. Hang on one sec. I'll never claim to have high quality production on these videos. But this is the Bio Reno battery. This is a 9 amp hour. And it's got a little charging cord right here that you can use to charge. And then this is the uh, connector for the Anderson Power Pro. But this is what's going to come with me when I go out in the field. 
and this is going to be plenty of hours of operation. Um, of course, depending upon if it's you know CW or sideband, if it's FM, not so much because it's a constant power drain. But but these are really neat little batteries um, to go with you when you go out in the field. Um, I think that pretty much covers. I just kind of wanted to put out a quick little video, so put some more content on my channel. Um, but uh, great radio if anybody's thinking about getting it. Um, and you, if you marry it up with a um, an amplifier, you don't have to get a KX3. There's a our KXP 100 amp. Uh, there's a, ones that are out there a lot uh, more affordable. And uh, they'll still put out decent power, uh, like 40, 50 watts, or maybe higher. And when you have that connected, then this, along with that amplifier, pretty much equals a uh, barefoot radio, um, higher than uh, just a QRP. So anyways, uh, just want to finish this up and say 7-3. Uh, Thanks to everybody who uh, watches my videos on the channel. And I uh, hope um, you'll be safe out there, and we'll talk to you again on a future video. This is K9AT, Dave signing off.